One of the Biden-Harris administration's powerful allies has close ties to China. Why is he bringing black-owned business interests to the CCP? Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell, and I want you to know how amazing you are. Two and a half weeks ago, we launched this fundraiser on Give, Send, Go to help China Uncensored build a censorship-free website. And not only did you guys help us blast past our initial goal, but you got us past our second goal as well, so we could start building iPhone and Android apps as well. We should be ready to launch the website part in just a few weeks. We'll be giving you exclusive episodes, special live streams, and a members-only chat. And now, we have raised our Give, Send, Go donation goal again. We've thought carefully about what we could do if we had more money, more episodes, better in-depth reporting, bribing our way to an interview with Xi Jinping. And then we decided, no. The number one most important thing we could do is buy a Cybertruck and tour around the country. So yeah, we've raised our goal. But no matter what, if you contribute $15 or more by October 31st, we'll give you your first month's premium website subscription for free, and lots of other cool rewards too. So click the Give, Send, Go link below and help us make China Uncensored even awesomer. And now on with the show. So the 2024 U.S. elections are in their final stretch, and I can't wait for them to be over. So the 2028 election campaigns can begin, because in America, elections never end. As the election winds up to its conclusion, both of the major candidates are facing a lot of scrutiny, and China is taking center stage. This is especially true for Vice President Kamala Harris, whose running mate, Tim Walz, has a long history with China which, depending on how you look at it, either means he has spent his political career criticizing the Chinese government, especially its human rights record, giving him loads of experience dealing with the oppressive regime, or that he's compromised. But Walls isn't the only person causing problems for Harris regarding China. There's another political ally of the Biden-Harris administration taking the spotlight because of China, and definitely not in a good way. His name is Ron Busby. He's a longtime president of the U.S. Black Chambers, Inc., a lobbying group that says it collaborates with policymakers from all political affiliations to advocate for policies that best serve the interest of the black community, more specifically, black-owned businesses. And he's been known to cozy up to the Chinese Communist Party. Busby has close ties to the current occupants of the White House. In early May, during the White House's Economic Opportunity Tour, Vice President Harris extolled Busby as an extraordinary leader who exhibits courageous leadership. And in July, Harris partnered with the U.S. Black Chambers, Inc. to host an exclusive reception at her private residence to honor black business leaders. The reception featured Busby, who said it was a powerful acknowledgement of the remarkable progress black business leaders have achieved in shaping our nation's economic landscape. But the ties between Busby and the Biden administration go back further than just this year. Busby has visited the White House on several occasions during Joe Biden's tenure as president, leveraging his position as a business leader in the black community to participate in meetings with top U.S. government officials, including Biden, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, and Harris. Of course, it's not Busby's ties with the Biden administration that are making headlines. It's a previously unreported 2017 trip he took to China, which included meeting with CCP officials. Now, by previously unreported, I mean officially, because Busby posted about it on his Facebook page. But Fox News dug up reports that gave more detail on what exactly that trip entailed. Busby went to China for 10 days as part of a delegation of New York government officials and business leaders called the New Majority Alliance. The New York in China Center, which aims to help New York-based businesses enter the Chinese market, sponsored the trip. And not only did these meetings have Chinese officials, there were also books and posters with the hammer and sickle. It was on that organization's website that Fox News found the reports regarding the trip, along with dozens of photos from the delegation's visit. Turns out the trip was also supported by the All-China Federation of Industry and Commerce, as well as the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China. The thing is, the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China is a CCP entity that serves as a mouthpiece for Beijing's propaganda and was recently implicated in the Linda Sun spying indictment in New York. We did episodes on that, which I can link below. But I'm sure this was just the first and only incident of someone with ties to the CCP doing something shady, right? 
On the trip, according to the New York and China Center, the delegation met with leaders and representatives of the business community in China, with exchanges in Sino-US technological innovation, business development, friendship agreements, and government-to-government -government relations. Because China is so well known for being friendly and fostering agreeable relations. They visited Xi'an, where they met with local CCP officials, as well as Beijing and Shanghai. Busby claimed the trip would spread the voice of American black-owned businesses to China and promote joint economic prosperity between China, Africa, and black Americans. And you mentioned earlier China will be involved in this, uh, this MOU. Uh, two weeks ago we were in China uh, and we did a similar memorandum of understanding with the Chinese uh, Chamber of Commerce. They understand the importance of being in, on the continent, obviously. But they also understand that there needs to be a relationship between the people on the continent. And they understand that African Americans have a natural relationship here. Uh, and so we, Trifecta, will work together to bring their resources that they have, along with the ingenuity, creativity that we have in the United States, uh, to bring that here. Collectively, uh, all three continents can grow. Uh, and they're very excited as, as well as we are. I guess he missed the memo about China's failures in Africa to woo the population over, or actually bring some economic relief. Understandable. Who can keep track of all the CCP's failures? I can barely do it, and it's my job! Later in 2022, in a report released by Busby's organization titled Black Print, Principled Policies for Strong Black Businesses, the U.S. Black Chambers, Inc. said that in an effort to provide black entrepreneurs with access to the global marketplace, it has signed Memorandum of Understandings with business leaders in Durban, Morocco, and China with the goal of connecting black business owners with global business opportunities. Busby may also have not seen that one Star Wars poster in China where it kind of feels like something is missing. As offensive as this is, it's sadly an accurate foreshadowing of the character's role in the trilogy. How progressive, Disney. Then there's that Black Panther reception in China. How does Busby think this is a good idea when China isn't even comfortable with fictional black communities thriving? Maybe he's not the expert he thinks he is. Making matters even worse are some of the groups that Busby engaged with during the trip. That includes the People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries. In 2020, then-Secretary of State Mike Pompeo released a press statement saying that this group is a Beijing-based organization tasked with co-opting subnational governments and has sought to directly and malignly influence state and local leaders to promote the PRC's global agenda. Meanwhile, in one of the New York and China Center's reports, it said that Busby told Chinese officials that the U.S. Black Chambers, Inc. administered more than 100 chambers, and he is willing to share and communicate the resources with Xi'an in various fields. Which seems unwise. After all, the Biden White House has warned that groups or consulates such as the New York and China Center or the People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries could entice business leaders with economic opportunities and use that to influence U.S. politics through opaque methods. But hey, it's not like Busby just came to China because he was enticed by economic opportunities. He was also enticed by the sweet content he could get for his social media. So he totally didn't fall into this obvious trap. So far, neither Busby nor Harris have responded to questions about the story. Which is strange, because Harris has been known to take so many interviews. And for them going so well. The U.S. Black Chambers and the New York and China Center also aren't answering questions. Busby isn't the first businessman to visit China, and sadly probably won't be the last. But you'd think that a man with an organization dedicated to helping those who have suffered oppression wouldn't be making business deals with an oppressive government. That'd be like Captain Planet teaming up with China! Man, they're cartoonishly evil. And the fact that Busby didn't officially report the trip is also troublesome for the vice president. But the good news is that this is all finally coming to light. After a number of Chinese spies have been caught in Western countries, including the U.S. and especially in the Big Apple, it could become much more difficult for the CCP to influence U.S. politics or otherwise harm American interests. And maybe Busby will have learned his lesson after all these revelations. Assuming, of course, his self-awareness isn't as hidden as the black actor in the Star Wars poster. And once again, thank you to all of you who are helping make the new censorship-free, China Uncensored premium website a reality. And for everyone else, there's still time to be part of this and get some cool rewards too. So click below to visit givesendgo.com slash China Uncensored, pledge your support, and leave a comment for me to read about what you hope to see on the new website. And before YouTube's algorithm sends you off to some random video, in my ongoing attempt to hide controversial topics and gaming content, here's a video about the new Sonic game 
and why you shouldn't rely on the government to solve your problems. Click here to check it out and let me know what you think. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.